Welcome to my short video about improving the quality of GP consultation records through the use of shortcuts. So what is a shortcut? Well, it's when you write a small string like pound back and it's automatically replaced by some text which could, for example, be history red flags, examination red flags, advice, safety netting, a list of investigations or a process message. So shortcuts offer a variety of benefits. They improve timekeeping, not just because of shortening typing time, but also looking things up. They also improve consistency and quality of records um, because you're uh, using red flags consistently, but also things like uh, stating that you've offered a chaperone. For me, they help to reduce a cognitive load and demand and the risk of burnout because they act as an aid memoir and reduce multitasking. And I've been very, very pleased and surprised to find that patients are also more satisfied when I use them because they feel that I'm having a thorough approach and also I can print out the consultation record with the advice I've given or send the advice as a text message. There are commonly three types of questions that are asked uh, of shortcuts. One is, what is the position medico legally? Second is, won't it clutter the record? And finally, what about coding? And pragmatically, my answers are, obviously you need to be honest and accurate when you create records, and that is no different when you're using shortcuts. Remember to edit out any parts you haven't asked or that aren't true, and to add in important uh, facts. Remember to be as brief as possible, so this is in the skill of writing shortcuts that are succinct. And finally, coding uh, in most shortcuts is not included, but then coding represents a small fraction of the record and you just have to remember to, to code where relevant. Here's an example of the assessment of suspected COVID-19 cases. You rem may remember this infographic from the BMJ from which I've developed the following history shortcut uh, highlighting particularly the red flags that we needed to ask about. And here's an example of it. Here's the COVID history completed for an example patient. So I have some tips regarding the use of shortcuts. First of all, keep it short and think which descriptive items are likely to be generally positive or which ones are generally likely to be recorded as negative. And you record them th that way in the shortcut at the outset. That way there'll be less editing to do. Start with a non-letter character and that's to stop the text being introduced into the record when you don't want it to. So for example, I've used pound for history, dollar for examination and so on. Put the things you're most likely to edit at the end, for example, a, a rectal exam in, a, uh, in, a, in an examination for back pain, because you don't do that in the majority of cases. Paste them in as you start, because they act as an aid memoir then, and have short and long versions. So, for example, for a neurological examination, make sure that they are your own, so you're intimately familiar with them. And write the advice ones in patient-friendly language so that they can be used as direct communication with patients. The other top tips is to create them as you do your CPD because it helps translate your learning into practice. Update them as you use them and if you're working across several organisations, keep a master copy of your shortcuts on your cloud uh, or use a text expander that syncs across several sites. Expect to have a learning curve and invest time and it does pay dividends and it can also be helpful to include diagnostic criteria in some of your text uh, shortcuts as I'll show you later. Sometimes explanatory notes and the rationale is difficult um, to remember so it's useful to include those as well. I have my shortcuts in five different categories and I use a different non-letter character at the beginning of each type. This UTI shortcut helps illustrate one of the points about the construction of these shortcuts which is to start with the symptoms that are most likely to be disclosed as being present or positive symptoms and then to list red flag symptoms or symptoms that are least likely to be present and uh, described automatically as negatives and that reduces the amount of editing you need to do. You'll see here that at the end I've listed symptoms that are specific to men and therefore it's easy just to remove those when you're editing the text expander because they're at the end. Here's a respiratory exam text expander and the editing required in a common case. Here's my headache text expander for the history and here it is completed with a typical migraine history. Here's my menopause history and here it is 
after using it in a typical case. Here's my history for establishing possible asthma in a child and here it is completed. I've used this excellent personal asthma plan for children to develop my shortcut for advice and safety netting for a child with asthma. And here is my child asthma safety netting shortcut. Here is my asthma preconception advice uh, hit the media this year with a, a case against a GP for his handling of preconception advice about folic acid. So my advice for those trying to fall pregnant includes advice about taking folic acid and also prompts me to check whether they're at high risk and need a higher dose of folic acid. You can see the high dose section highlighted here which would be deleted if not relevant. Here's the antenatal care shortcut again with the folic acid advice in and the high risk for neural tube defect section. Polycystic ovaries is a condition that I always need to look up the diagnostic criteria, so a good reason to have a history shortcut. My PCOS history shortcut includes the diagnostic criteria, and when I see the patient I can amend it and just remove the diagnostic criteria. Irritable bowel syndrome is another condition that I often find myself looking up to be clear on the diagnostic criteria, so another reason to incorporate them into a text expander. Here's my IBS history text expander with the criteria below for reference, and here it is in use. Recently had cause to review some guidance on hyperemesis gravidarum using these resources. So here's my text expander for hyperemesis and at the bottom I've just got a reminder about the thresholds for considering it to be moderate or severe with the puke score and obviously those I would delete uh, when I have a patient. Here it is filled out with an example patient. Here is my syncope shortcut and here, here is the syncope shortcut followed in with a imaginary patient. Fertility history is a long one with lots of important key facts that need collecting, so a good example for a text expander. Here is an example of it in use. I used Red Whale's excellent resource on assessing domestic abuse and violence in remote consulting for a history text expander on domestic violence. And here's an example of an assessment for suspected domestic violence or abuse with the edits after assessing a patient. I use this excellent resource for parents to create my shortcuts in connection with a baby with diarrhea and vomiting. Here is a shortcut for a suicide risk assessment history and general practice. This is always a huge challenge. And here's an example of it filled in. In preparation for the croup season, I revisited the CKS guidance on croup for my shortcut on history for croup with important red flags included there. This is my croup examination shortcut and you can see the bottom half are pointers to myself about which children would need admitting. Here it is filled out with those pointers obviously deleted because they don't need to be part of the medical record. Here's my shortcut for advice and sa safety netting for croup and at the end again I put in for reference the treatment and criteria for admission which I delete uh, because they don't need to be included in the notes. Here's my palpitation shortcut which covers a variety of features I got from a cardiology for GPs podcast to remind me of features, for example, abrupt, abrupt termination by coughing and straining for supraventricular tachycardia and so on. And so uh, that's the history shortcut. Here's an example of it filled in for a typical patient who gets 
palpitations at a fast rate at rest um, admits to significant anxiety and is taking more salbutamol than usual and has no red flags. Asthma safety netting is so important. There are still so many patients who don't understand how to use their treatments and when to seek help. This is my asthma management plan edited for a particular patient. This is a history for non-accidental injury in a child and the things to remember to consider. This is the example of it completed for a child who sustained supposedly an injury to the arm caused by the older brother. There is a range of text expander softwares to choose from. The examples are listed here. Some of them are free, some of them require a small fee, but often well worth it. And in choosing your text expander, you may want to consider recommendation from a colleague, whether they've got tutorials and online support, whether there's a cap on the number of shortcuts because the list quickly grows, whether you can back up your shortcuts onto cloud so that you can um, use it across several organizations, whether it's compatible with Apple or Mac or Windows, um, whether they are browser extensions or standalone programs, and whether it includes macros as well as just snippets, so text replacement. I sought advice from the medical defense organization I'm with about the use of shortcuts as uh, there had been some anxieties about this and was reassured to find that they were supportive, providing, as always, one checks that one is creating accurate records. Thank you for listening this far. Feel free to contact me for feedback at this email address. Do share some of your shortcuts with me and good luck creating your own database and uh, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel.